This week's sponsor you're going to want to check out. They are running a campaign on GameFound.com, link down below. Now, this is Awakened Realms Heroes and Companions dice. But what do they do, I hear you ask? Each of the three packs that come in the master box all contain a series of cards. And the cards do various things. So here we have a dice for emotions of NPCs. We've got a dice for weather. How many times have you been asked about what the weather is and you don't really know? Lots and lots of different options. And then, the actual dice. These dice, focus, are the most gorgeous dice I have ever seen. They almost feel like little religious inscription panels that you would see in a cathedral. They are beautiful. And that number, my favorite thing, Super clear. The illustrations on the card are stunning. And then on the back, you have all of these options. Now, the Game Found campaign that they're running, Awaken Realms, as I said, links down below. And there's just a whole bunch of stuff that you can add to it. There's minis, there's all kinds of wonderful things. Go check them out. They've sponsored today's video. And so now, we get on with the video. Oh look, another fire pit. Oh, is it poison darts this time? Slippery slope. Oh, is it only a hundred foot wide cavern that we have to somehow get across? Oh boy. Traps. It's a trap! Or not. Hello and welcome to this week's episode. My name is Rodney. For this particular episode. Anyway, my name is Guy and we are looking at taking traps and doing more with them because traps frequently are solved by one member of the party and then the rest of them just sort of tag along and suffer as a result of not being built as ninjas. This is not interesting. Having a mundane trap where you go, ooh, ooh, ooh they're gonna struggle, they're gonna cross this, it's a 30 foot wide pit. And then the wizard just flies over. These kind of mundane traps are also totally, totally illogical. Illogical! Illogical in a magical world, in a fantasy world. Oh, I'm a great and powerful king and I'm going to build my tomb full of all of my treasure and not protect it against magic users. No, boring, dull, why would you do that? Don't be daft. The pharaohs who were protecting their great pyramids and tombs and things, they built traps to prevent human beings from getting in and out. Those traps were specifically designed for non-magical human beings. I guarantee it. If the pharaohs had had access to true magic, the great powers of the gods, Ptah, Knum, and Set, and all those wonderful things. If they actually had magical abilities, those pyramids would have been invisible, floating upside down, and trapped up the yin-yang to prevent anyone with magic from being able to get in. Now, we also cannot fill our tombs with giant anti-magic shells. Or can we? No, we can't. So, what do we do? How do we make traps more interesting? Well, there are at least two different things that you must take into account when you are adding in traps into your next session. Because you can, and traps are fun if you do them in the right way. So, how do we do it? Okay, first of all, think of yourself as the trap builder. You've been commissioned to build this trap. If you are a goblin and you are trying to build a trap in a passageway because you are worried about ogres, orcs, bugbears, or heroes coming down it, sure, you are limited in what you can do. Maybe a few little spikes, wooden spikes on a stick that's tied to a little tripwire. Absolutely fine. 100%. Nothing wrong with that. If you're a really tricksy goblin, you might go, okay, well, that's going to swip around and then there, there, that's it. It's not going to do anything else. So if I do a pulley system, it could swip around and then it could swip back again. So it kind of catches someone coming in and catches someone as they walk past as well. That's just more technical heebie-jeebie and highly unlikely to actually get right. Traps are delicate things, generally speaking, or they once off type of triggers. So if that is the person who's building your trap, it needs to be simple. If, on the other hand, this is a tomb of an undead lich who is using it for diabolical reasons, and they know that magic is there, 
the trap builder is going to go, all right, fine. So we've got this 30 foot pit, but we have to assume that whoever is coming in here has got through a dozen guards past the uh, Cerberus beast, past the Hydra, past the Beholder, and now they've got to this pit. It's not going to slow them down for a moment. The monk is going to be able to leap 60 feet anyway. The wizard is going to be able to spider climb across. The druid is going to turn into an owl. And that would leave only the paladin and the warrior on the other side. But they're just going to throw a rope. Or they're going to throw a goblin with a rope. Or they're going to throw a goblin, a rope, and a grappling hook. So how do we do this? How does the boss want us to do this so that it does become challenging? Well, there are a couple ways of looking at it. And I would like to suggest to you the idea of a complex trap. And that is a trap that is designed to thwart not just one type of class, but multiple types of classes at the same time to actually make it challenging. So your open pit, for example, you set it at 60 feet or 70 feet across and there is nothing at the bottom or it's a 100 foot drop down onto spikes. Featherfall solves that problem. I've already done that. Let's get moving on. As someone tries to leap over it, there is also a large vent next to the uh, pit. And that vent has a gust of very strong air, which will push whoever against spikes onto and against the opposite wall. Right. Okay. So now we're starting to think of a complex trap as it's got two pieces to it. So A, there's a pit that you have to somehow get across, and B, there is this gush of air that is now pushing across as well. It's not impossible to get across. Here's the other thing. We can't build perfect traps that prevent characters from getting across. There also must be, and I have always, always advocated this, there must be a way for the bad guy to get across this with the flick of a button, a pull of a lever, a touch of a special surface, or an alternative corridor that has to exist. If it doesn't exist, unfortunately, your dungeon is a bust. There has to be a way of getting across because otherwise, what's the point? Unless it is a tomb. In that case, then, there shouldn't be a way of getting across. It should be really, really difficult. Now, let's say, for example, the players realize that the gust of wind is about three foot above the pit. So if you fly low straight through, you could get across. That's fair. That's them using their savvy learning and understanding and developing a plan, and then they get across. Cool. That's the trap in action. It has done exactly what it has needed to do. It has made the players think about it. It has also not been overcome necessarily by endless dice rolls, which could be failed or could be succeeded. Dice rolls are fun, don't get me wrong. But if your entire trap res re relies on the players making a single, single die roll to overcome it, unfortunately, all you're doing is setting yourself up for a very frustrating afternoon of the players going, well, we rolled, we rolled poorly. We've got nothing left to roll with, so we just can't get across. Well, now you have to leave and go back to the village and... Uh... There goes the entire point. So traps need to have the ability for the players to get across by just thinking through it practically as well as potentially making some rolls. Think of another type of trap. Just let me give you another example. The landings are of different heights. Okay, great. At different heights, there are different things happening. There are illusionary landings so that the grappling hook doesn't go through. There are landings that have got spikes on them. There are landings that simply fall. So there are multiple different landings that the characters have to climb up. Every single landing presents a different challenge for the characters to overcome. That's fun. That's fun, right? Spikes. How do we overcome the spikes? Well, we just don't climb to that landing. Can we climb 150 feet vertically straight up? No, we can't because our rope's not that long. Okay, so how do we handle the spikes? Well, the warrior can put his shield on top and then we stand on top of the shield. Great solution. We create a complicated space that requires some clever thinking. However, this leads me now into the next point about traps. When it comes to the party moving through a trap space, if they have paused and they have thought and they have tried and failed and then they have tried again and they have worked away through the trap, the worst thing that you can do, and I've done it myself, so this is me speaking from experience, is then to say, okay, great. So the agile thief with a super high athletics or acrobatic score or whatever it is that they're using gets through. Time for the 
Paladin in plate mail, who's about as dexterous as a rock. Oh, you fail and you die. Why? We figured out how to get across the trap. You are creating your own block once again. Why not just make the roll 50 for the uh, thief who managed to get through? Once the party has got through the trap, everybody else should be able to get through the trap without severe risk of death. Either the party will split up and someone will get left behind, someone will fail and take significant damage and be grumpy about it. Well, we solved the trap, but I suffered anyway which is not fair. And forget about the fairness side of things, it's also just ploddingly pedantic. Your pace is slowed down, no one is making a decision. You might as well just say, everybody just roll a whole bunch of dice and whoever doesn't get above a five, you will take damage. Why go to the bother of building the trap in the first place? What I advocate is not that you get rid of the trap altogether. It's not that you roll for every character crossing that trap. What you do is you get every character to roll a time dice or a counter dice or an initiative dice or uh, whatever dice you want. It can be any value, any sided dice. It doesn't really make a huge difference. They roll that and that is how long it takes them to work their way through the trap. Now, if you don't keep track of time, then this is irrelevant. It is absolutely a waste of time. Don't do it. On the other hand, if the temple is collapsing, if the players are being chased by monsters, if there are monsters waiting for the players, then it must be used. It must be critical that the players are aware. Okay, let me roll. And you can modify this however you like. You go, okay, cool guys. So you've now worked out how to get across this whole illusional web of complicated traps. That was the first character you got through. Their time is one. Everybody else moving through. Roll your times. Okay, great. Paladin, you took 20 minutes to crawl, climb, slowly swing your way through this entire thing. If you want to decrease that time, roll the skill that I think is most appropriate. And if you succeed, you decrease it by half. If you fail, you add five units of time, five seconds, five minutes to it. So there is still the roll risk. There is still that tension which the players crave, but there is no risk of, oh, well, you fell to your death, boo hoo hoo, even though they got through the trap. What that also does is that then puts pressure on the players to go, oh my goodness. Okay, so we got through the trap, great, but it took us half an hour. We're now chasing half an hour later. The monsters have had time to assemble in front of us. The creature we were chasing has got away. The, 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 the tension that doing a time calculation for getting through the trap rather than, oh, well, you take, oh, look, you take three points of spike damage from the trap because I rolled three ones on 3d20. Blech, stupid. Waste of time. Why bother including it? This is my thought on traps, right? The players need to know that there are traps available or present. And this could be by starting them off with a mundane one. You step forward, there's a puff of gas because that's the cheapest way in your fantasy world of getting rid of creatures. They go, oh, this place is trapped. Cool. And it's a super simple trap. We just walk through it. We cover our mouths in, in balaclavas or in handkerchiefs or whatever, and we're through. Okay, cool. But they know the trap's coming up. What that does is that that sets them on the path of going, okay, we need to be cautious. We need to be aware. If you can introduce some kind of time pressure or some kind of idea that the monsters or whoever's in this place also knows that the player characters are there, then when they do come across those traps that are costing them time, that's when it becomes useful. I mean, if you keep track of food and water, it becomes really useful to go, well, that trap took you an hour to get through. When I look at people doing cross-country uh, events, I was at Hever Castle the other day and there was this big family event where there were lots of little obstacles. They weren't traps per se, but it was things like, here's a pontoon or here's a raft, pull yourself across a river. That was no more than 20 feet in width. It was amazing to see how people slowed down and the time factor was the entire challenge. Not can you get across it, because if you can't get across it, then it's not really fun. Anyway, enough from me. A huge thank you to my wonderful patrons who keep the channel going. And of course, to all of you for watching all the way through until the end. What are your traps? What do you like to do? Give me an example of a trap that you had that worked really, really well and that was really fun to do. And share it in the comments down below. 
For more, follow How To Be A Great GM. We are all over the place. We release videos every Monday, every Tuesday. There's a live show. And on Thursdays are shorts. Until next time, I wish you and yours the happiest of gaming.